Hey guys, Warm here again. And today I have a another replay in the AMX 5120. I just seem to, this is the only tank that I do well in uh, nowadays, but I wanted to talk about today um, map awareness and um, the biggest, uh, one of the biggest tips that I have when you're kind of undecided on what to do is when you're in doubt, defend. Um, it's just easier to um, set up a defensive position and I think this game just kind of tailors towards defensive play. And I'll show you later on a bit of um, some of the reasons why that's important. Um, so initially um, on Ghost Town, I like to go to this position right here at um, B8 or on the reverse side on the other side, the cell spawn um, around J8. I think this is a really good position because a lot of heavies like to poke this area and um, when they get spotted, you can get side shots potentially because they're facing their turrets this way in a sense. But you have to be careful that as I'm pinging this location here is that a light tank can make their way along these sets of bushes here and they can actually spot you before you spot them. So that's why I leave this position since our Revelor Rise hasn't gone over here or here to take this position and counter spot. So I'm worried that I'm gonna get, you know, spotted because the AMX 5120 has is a very large tank and has a really bad um, camo rating. And so here is when I notice the majority of our team is in town and then um, we've sent a lot of players um, to this side, but we only had one CS59 um, on the one line. And I can already see that they have <laughs> five tanks on that side. And so what they're gonna start to realize, the enemies, is that they need to start pushing. Well, unfortunately, uh, don't give enough lead to that Senlac, and then I get spotted by the mill. And the Emil's playing well, that he's he's staying hold down, so I don't want to poke that. Um, he's most likely going to pen penetrate me while I'm not going to be able to penetrate him. But what I'm thinking is that the enemies are probably going to notice that there's only one player here and they're going to start pushing in. And what that allows you to do when you're defending is that you are you can find a very good position where there's soft cover, so you're less likely to be spotted and you can get, um, get damage out, right? And ultimately, it's about softening up the enemies so that when they do push, kind of like this tortoise, so I get one shot into him. Fortunately, don't get lucky on the second shot. And then the third shot goes in. So it's all about trying to, you know, make sure that you have vision. Like the CS59 is getting good vision. I would like to see him back up to po possibly over here because he can still spot and he would be have like a safe um distance but now he's kind of just getting trampled on uh, and so he's all i mean the biggest thing is i'm trying not to, i'm trying to make sure this guy doesn't die in vain so i decide to focus down the um, t69 since he's out in the open and he's he has an auto loader so he's a very powerful tank now i have two shells left and i'm just waiting for someone to be spotted so just trying to be careful I'm not trying to poke out too much so that I'm exposing myself and here I get spotted so I take a shot from the mill take a second shot and luckily I only eat one shot of damage the other shots bounced and I, I didn't actually fall back far enough so the centurion most likely f um, from from here he he bounced as well so we probably should should be down uh, a lot more HP, but luckily RNG was on our side. And now um, this this game is looking pretty good. We're up by 3,000 HP, and we have a pretty good defense. And the two Scorpion Gs um, have uh, realized that there's no, no damage to be had on the other side, so they've also come over here to support. So here we get a side shot on this Black Prince, and just clipping him out. I'm trying to see if I can empty my last shell before I hit reload. And now I hit reload and um, 
this is when 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 more tanks are are uh, have have died, especially in your auto loaders, you have to think about trying to survive and preserving your HP till the end of the battle. That's where you can be your most powerful. And notice that I try to, you know, drive towards the the edge of the map, so I minimize the ability for the Senlac or anyone here to spot me. So. Now is when I decide that um, I don't want to push this side. Um, there could be a light tank or someone here. So I want to push through the city since we have a major tank advantage. And um, looks like our SU-100M1 is um, angry at our mediums and apparently he's also mad at me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you have players who, who get frustrated in the game and, um, you know, he's been sitting here for the majority of the game and hasn't really been able to um, do any damage or anything. So here um, I let the T69 go take out the ML1 because I'm not spotted. For all they know, I'm still over here. So I'm, I'm kind of holding off these guys and um, these guys um, are kind of just being useless on this side. So I want to... Um, not show myself immediately. And then we spot the set, uh, the setter. Oh, I've been calling it the Senlac the whole time. It's a, it's the setter, the tier seven. Um, <laughs> uh, those British uh, light tanks are um, pretty bad. Um, I, I, I have the tier nine and um, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty tough to play. <laughs> Um, but yeah, now now it's just cleanup work, and um, we have 3,000 damage, and here I get spotted. I'm thinking that it was someone on the hill here, but it's actually the Scorpion G. And um, he unwisely doesn't double bush, and uh, <laughs> we're able to track him twice. Uh, now it's to 4,000, and Tortoise spots the Comet, so I'm waiting for him to back up and shoot my final shell before I go on reload. So, yeah, a pretty great result. And um, say we thoroughly um, were able to carry our team this game. Um, our Tortoise, <laughs> I don't understand why he went to this side. He would, probably would have been better to get more damage. And that's my advice for anyone playing very slow tanks is go to, <laughs> go to the areas of the map where you know there's gonna be fighting so you can get your you can get some damage, right? You can influence influence the outcome of this game because this tortoise really didn't influence this game even though he was top tier, right? And that's another reason why I really enjoy mobile, mobile tanks, right? You can potentially have multiple influences on the map if you potentially go to the wrong place, right? So that's another reason why I thoroughly enjoy this tank. And I think it has to do with, I know that the interclip reload is very long. I think it's like, 3.33 seconds or something and so you have to play it like um not like a traditional auto where you where you can go in the city and you can you know after someone fires you can dump all your shells because after you fire two shells they're going to be reloaded so this this tank really you have to play as a sniper you cannot be frontline even if you're like in this matchup top tier like i, I did not even go into the city until the end of the game right and just finding areas where you can defend from strong locations that have good fields of view, as well as um, I wasn't really providing much of your range in this tank just because I know I'm gonna get outspotted because this tank is just huge and has really bad camo. But those are the type of plays that you um, want to try to make more and I try to make more as well as I try to get better as a player. So let's take a look at the post game stats. All right, guys, we're here in the post-game stats. This is a second class. Um, I had a, um, an ace tanker on this on this map um, earlier, actually on the south spawn, and I kind of uh, played in, in a similar fashion, um, but unfortunately it was in the previous patch. Um, and let's see, how do we do? Yep, 4,800 damage. Um, uh, pretty much double almost anyone else. Um, this uh, CS59, he did a really good job um, spotting for us on the other side. He got 2,000 spotting, so um, kudos to him um, for trying to hold and um, 
It's unfortunate. I mean, a lot of these players kind of um, didn't really know where they were going and didn't have um, as big of a contribution. Um, so it's all about map awareness, really, um, and figuring out where you where to place your tank in order to have the biggest impact. Right. The enemy tortoise also, although he did drive to the middle, um, he was he 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 didn't really. How do I want to say it? Like he should be more aggressive in, in the middle, but you also have to realize the limitations of your tank when you don't have a turret and you're very slow like the tortoise is that you're very susceptible to flanking. So a lot of players won't just sit out in front of you. So you really have to, you know, make sure you're using your teammates and your terrain very well. The Emil too was also very aggressive at the beginning and he kind of found himself um, surrounded after we kind of took out his allies around him. The 16 shots fired, um, 14 direct hits and 13 penetrations. So very good marksmanship again. Um, again, most of our damage was done at over 300 meters and that's where I think you can be, where I find the most success in the AMX 50 120 is 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 in the sniping role right you shouldn't play like a t54e1 that has a two second interclip reload and um has a little bit better armor than you right um that's where that tank shines your tank or this tank in particular shines at sniping um it has a longer interclip reload but it's more accurate so just playing to the strengths of your tank and has way more mobility as well so just trying to utilize that to the best of my ability um let's see twenty-eight thousand credits made so we didn't fire any premiums rounds this game and it was seven and a half minute game so um again i think the biggest key takeaway from this battle is when in doubt defend um, when you see a flank um that's being uncovered or been abandoned it doesn't mean you can just you should just give up um map control for free right you want to if you do need to fall back you want to make sure that you fall back in a way that um you can take hp off the enemies right you don't want them to be able to gain ground for free um any extra ground that they take um they should have to earn it um through their hp so that's that's generally what you want to do so um, sometimes that might result you and result you being <laughs> like the CS59, um, getting trampled over. But I mean, he was able to hold off as long as he could, and he was able to, you know, be the second on uh, experience on the team, right? And he was very uh, key in in this victory. I don't think we would have won <laughs> if the CS59 wasn't there. So um, just recognizing that. You shouldn't just give up a position. I feel like a lot of replays show, you know, Unicom's just letting their teammates die and then they fall back and they get like, you know, 5,000, 8,000, 10,000 damage. Whereas you really have to think about how um, if everybody played like that, um, those teams would lose a lot. And that's that's where I found some, some, some games where you think that um, that's kind of why XVM um, is is both uh, a blessing and a curse in a way is um, when you have teams that are, um, you know, have exceptionally, everyone's like a really good player. Um, there's kind of like this racing mentality where everyone wants to race to get the damage, right? And um, that's when a lot of mistakes can happen. And that's how um, teams with players who are, um, I guess based on a skill level, based on a W and eight scale, they're they're ranked a bit lower. But it's all about understanding the need to hold a position and when to fall back and how to fall back. Falling back doesn't mean just running away from a position, but you know, falling back to a uh, a better defensive position where you can still provide view range, right? So that's another key thing. Is I found a lot of times. Um, I've had a lot of teams and games where um, teams will just leave an entire flank abandoned. Um, whereas that's not um, generally how I see a lot of teams winning their games. Because um, when you lose map control, it really forces tanks that are not as flexible and don't have good camel like the AMX kind of high and dry and they can't really use their guns. So um, 
Hope you guys learned something from this video. Been rambling on for a little, bit, little while there. And let me know your thoughts on, um, you know, defending how the progression of the of the game has been, as well as the, the new patch and equipment 2.0. I mean, if you guys want me to do a video because um, I haven't really played around with a lot of the new equipment setups. So um, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on that. So thank you guys for watching. We're out.